you're a badass wizard with a fireball spell and you're not afraid to use it. However, some of your party might be, and to allay their fears of getting literally caught in your crossfire, it's time to study up on spell range and areas of effect on this week's Handbook or Helper. Don't know how to play? We'll, we'll show, show you the way. Handbook, 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 handbook or helper, handbook or helper. The description of a spell will always tell you what its range is. Range is the max distance that a spell can travel from you to find a target. Many spells have a range given in feet. 10 feet, 30 feet, 60 feet, 120 feet. These are all very common ranges. Is that knoll that you're targeting 70 feet away and you're preparing a 60 foot range sacred flame? It's too far and you gotta get closer. The target is where the spell is intended to impact, whether that's on a creature, an object, or a point in space. That target is the epicenter of your spell. Some spells will say that their range is touch or labeled self. These mean that the target is either a creature that you have to touch or you have to touch yourself, <laughs> respectively. Don't forget, you count as a creature, so if a target's a creature, you can choose to be your own target. Now, while some spells target a single or multiple creatures within that range, others instead cause a burst of magic detonation from a space within range, affecting multiple or all creatures within that burst. This is referred to as an area of effect, which is the most important building block in determining spells that affect an area larger than a single target. It's how you make sure that the fireball you're planning to cast won't singe your friends, or that slow spell will affect as many foes as possible. The description of the spell will tell you whether said effect bursts out in a specific shape, like a cone, a cube, no, not that cube, that cube, a cylinder, a line, or a sphere. You can find details about these areas of effect on page 204 in the player's handbook. Cones, cubes, and lines all can have points of origin that are not included in the area of effect, unless you choose them to be. So if you want your shatter spell to hurt those three goblins, but not the fighter that's in their face, aim its point of origin in a spot that will ensure that sphere includes those goblins, but keeps your fighter on the outside of it. It's the same with all spells that have an area of effect. The point of origin that you choose could mean a happy ally and an unhappy enemy, or an unhappy ally and, well, probably still an unhappy enemy. Oh, and lots of spells use yourself as a point of origin, like burning hands or color spray, or most spells with cones. But that's not a hard and fast rule. Spells are all different, and what works for one might not work for another. Always check and double check, and maybe triple check the wording of the spell you're intending to use to make sure that the target is in range and that the area of effect only includes the creatures you want to be affected. That's all for today's Handbook or Helper. Keep your spells close and your enemies as far away as possible, you glorious glass cannons. Handbook, 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 handbook or Helper. Handbook or Helper. Ding.